by the North American Boxing Federation supervisor ringside is Nevada Commissioner Dwayne Horde. The three judges are Dr. James Jenkin, Bill Graham, and Cindy Barton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with 12 rounds for the NABF Super Welterweight Championship of the World. The referee for this bout is Carlos Padilla. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, He's wearing the black trunks with red trim and weighs 153 and one half pounds from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His professional record, 33 and 11, two draws, 25 of those 33 victories by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger tonight, former IBF junior middleweight champion of the world, Buster Demon Drayton. And fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing the white trunks and weighing an even 151 pounds from San Diego, California. As a professional, he's 19 and two, 12 KOs, ranked number four in the world by the IBF. Ladies and gentlemen, the NABF super welterweight champion, terrible Terry Nora. Not this way, or you're going to box for 12 rounds. You were already given instructions in your respective dressing rooms. Any question? Okay, seconds come out, fighting. So, terrible Terry Norris. I'm not sure about that nickname. <laughs> But Terry Norris, one fight away he feels from a championship shot. And this is a pretty big step that he gets tonight against Buster Drayton. Drayton coming off a knockout loss, but he's very philosophical about that. Well, he knows that Julian Jackson, a very talented young man, uh, he knows that he hurt Jackson a couple times in the fight, but he also knows that Julian Jackson is coming into his own. And uh, there was no shame in losing that bout. 19 up and two down. One of them a disqualification. We did that fight here on ESPN against Joe Walker, and it was a, it was pretty flagrant, and he deserved to be disqualified. Uncharacteristic of Terry. And, uh, I asked him today about that, about the, the disappointment after that, and uh, did he think he had really set his career back seriously? And he said no. He had confidence that he, if he just kept winning, he'd be right back in the hunt. Let me just jump off the track for one second and correct something that we had in the Brookside Report. I had mentioned that. Marlon Starling's last opponent was Greg Hogan, and of course it was Lloyd Hunnigan. I knew that. Honest folks. They both started with H's. You know, exactly. That, that's your mistake for 1989, okay? <laughs> body shot by Terry Norris. He is a good, he is a good body puncher, and uh, so is Drayton for that matter. Very respectful first round by both men, and that's appropriate. Often you see yellow gloves every once in a while here on Top Rank Boxing. You see different colored gloves. Oh. Watch your head. Watch your head. Carlos Padilla. Look out for butts that touch gloves. You really don't want to see a fight like this spoiled by headbutt. No, no, this would be this would be very bad because these are two evenly matched boxers who should provide a very interesting fight. The hand speed of Terry Norris, you see it there, that might be the difference. You know, that, that was the difference in the Jackson fight for Drayton. But Julian Jackson might be a harder hitter than Terry Norris. Even though uh, if you ask Steve Little about it, he'll tell you that not too many people hit harder than Terry Norris. Classic punch. As a matter of fact, Buster Drayton was saying, we asked him if he'd seen Terry Norris fight. He said, yeah, I saw him fight against Steve Little. And he said, this guy's pretty good. Good shot there by Norris with the left hand backed up Drayton. Drayton is probably most effective when he's least expected to be effective. That's exactly right. The fights he shouldn't win that he always wins. I know exactly what you meant, Barry. I, I appreciate that. that. <laughs> After some months, you're on the same wavelength, and I'm worried about that. I, I really am. We ought to be. Pretty good first round for Terry Norris, showing great hand speed. We'll be back right after this.
because Buster Drayton's a veteran who got away from it. But boy, you saw right there what a well-schooled box you, Terry Norris is and how quick his hands are. Very effective at the end of the first round was Terry Norris, too. And in his corner, that's basically what they said. You're doing a pretty good job. They said, don't worry about taking him out. If you heard him, take him out. If you don't, wear him out. I thought that was interesting advice. Here's our punch oh, profile. Man. Not a sterling round for Buster Drayton, was it? And uh, you see Norris landing a very high percentage of his shots. Being choosy about what he throws, but even in that sequence we showed, he landed two out of three. Just bad. <laughs> Norris is showing a very crisp jab. That is a trademark with him. And, you know, in recent fights especially, uh, Barry, starting with the, the Quincy Taylor fight, and he had a fight with Gil Baptiste in um, San Diego, in which he showed it, and then he, in the little fight as well. His jab has been a potent weapon. Counter-punching left hand, Dr. Aiden backward. <laughs> These guys can get a man out of there. Mm-hmm, and uh, for Buster Drayton, that 54% has come against probably better competition. Norris, obviously, with a healthy respect for Buster Drayton. And he's really not letting Drayton get off. So he seems confused by the hand speed of Terry Norris. He just doesn't seem to be able to get started himself. There's a right hand downstairs by Buster Drayton. And I think Buster might do well to look for the body here against Terry Norris. Because Terry is tough to hit in the head. fighting like a fighter who does not want to make a careless mistake. He is as poised a 21-year-old in the ring as you are likely to see. Yeah, in fact, when you asked him how old he was this morning, he said 21. I actually, I knew he was, but I was still surprised to hear him say that. I know, I kidded him. I said, you can be 21 forever. It seems like forever, because he's a good young fighter. So we head to the end of the second round, and little action, really, in the second round. You're looking into the corner of Terry Norris, and again, it's a very composed corner. Usually only one voice talking, giving advice. And the game plan for him is just to wear Buster Drayton out. Voice of Abel Sanchez, and there's Buster Drayton, the 35-year-old warrior who has seen a lot in his boxing career. Yeah, he talked about himself, and we were talking to him this morning about taking the fight on one week's notice, and he said, it's nothing new, it's old soup, you just reheat it. <laughs> I like that phrase. Yeah. Well, he's... Things. You could tell the pace picking up here in the third round. Buster participated in one of the one of the most dramatic moments on our top-ranked boxing show back in 1983. Went to Bristol, Tennessee as a big underdog to Clint Jackson, who then was just a step or so away from a title match. And in the second round of that fight in Bristol, hometown really almost for Clint Jackson from Nashville, he leveled him with an overhand right. And it was like timber with Clint Jackson falling. And, uh, that crowd sat stunned at the Buster Drayton. It was a big moment. It really propelled him on to becoming a contender. Terry Norris continues up on his toes. A couple of jabs and a quick right hand and get out. There you see the, uh, the punches in the, that second round. Not too effective for either man, but again, the slight edge for Norris. Now Drake doing some work for the first time, really, in this fight. Trying to go to the body. It was a little bit low with a couple of those, too. And draws a warning from Carlos Padilla. First time they've been at close range. And a left hand puts Drayton down. a 
quick left hand, and I think it surprised Drake more than anything else, and a body shot right off the bat by Norris. Well, Norris doing the right thing by working downstairs now, and Buster is still wobbling. And the more Buster opens himself up with those wild shots, the more likely he is to get nailed again. That was the first time Norris went inside on him, and he was most effective. And Carlos Padilla wants a timeout. What's this for? What do you think? What? Is this guy fighting? He was asking him if Drayton okay. was fighting, but I, I huh? believe absolutely Drayton was fighting. What's he talking about? Wow, that's weird. Carlos, that was weird. Carlos Padilla's been a little out of sync all night, to tell you the truth. Uh, that, uh, that is, well, we're going to have to try and get some explanation of that, because it, it makes absolutely no sense. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. Have I you don't been know around this game longer than I have? I, I have no concept of why that actually stopped. Drayton had a big right hand on the ball. If I'm in Terry Norris's corner, I'm going to be very distressed about what Carlos Padilla did because he just took the fight and made the flow go back to Buster Drayton. Buster Drayton was in trouble, had been down. And now Drayton has a chance to completely get himself composed and go after Terry Norris. And he's doing just that. Came up with the left hand a moment ago again. Very weird actions by Carlos Padilla. Michael Nunn knows about weird uh, officials' actions sometimes, and uh, we'll get a chance to talk to him about it. We've been joined by Michael Nunn. Michael actually spent more time in the ring being introduced by Michael Buffer a few minutes ago than he did on Saturday night in his win against Sambu Kalambe. Michael, it's interesting, I think, that baseball pitchers pitch shutouts. Fighters don't pitch shutouts. Don't you know that? But you did it. Yeah, I did, Barrett. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, overjoyed behind that victory, you know. Uh, I think I proved that I was, I'm the best middleweight in the world by I mean, knocking out Sambu Kalambe. Yeah, that was a tough, pretty tough guy. Didn't appear to be, by the way, you took care of him in the first round, but definitely a step up for you in terms of competition. But, uh, yes, uh, it is uh, a big step up, you know, for me, and uh, I just want to sit back and enjoy this one and get ready to do it again in the next few months. I don't think there's any question about it. You know, I looked at the look on your face, Michael, and it almost looked like you were shocked initially when he went down that from that left hand, even though it was a great punch. Yeah, it was a great punch, yeah. I was shocked because I figured I'd knock him out inside six or eight rounds. Mm -hmm. And when I came out here with that left hand, I knew the fight was over because when I hit him, his body had went limp. Speaking of knockdowns, you'll see here, nice left hook by Terry Norris. Great left hook by Terry. So we start the fourth round now. Norris and Drayton, and we'll keep Michael Nunn with us. Michael, I have to ask you about the linguistics that went on after the fight, actually after the post-fight story in the New York Post today about some conversations that you and Sugar Ray Leonard had at a post-fight party. Oh uh, yeah, you know, me and Leonard, we got together uh, Saturday night and uh, raised a little saying, you know, we had a good time doing it, you know. Just for fun, <laughs> huh? Just for kicks. We're trying to sell any tickets here, were you? Well, not yet. <laughs> I'm curious also what you think, Michael, about what happened in there where Carlos Padilla stopped the action and, and walked over after Buster Drayton had been down. I, I thought uh, Terry could have got him out of there by Carlos stopping the fight, sent him over to the doctor, gave him enough time to, mm -hmm. to recover. Not sure what they get his feet back up under. He actually went to the commission over there. Uh, I don't know if he if he was talking to the doctor or what, but whatever it was, it did give Buster Drayton a chance to get back in this. We're talking with Michael Nunn, who, of course, retained his IBF title in most impressive fashion. You're in a situation now, Michael. You've got to wait, sit back and wait for people to come to you. Well, yes, I can, Barry, but, you know, I, I just want to stay busy. You know, I just, I told, you know, my manager, I said, look, Dan, I said, it was great. And I went out and knocked Colin about early. I want to get back in within the next three months. And I just want to be an active champion because... I've been successful doing that, so I changed. Do you, do you feel that you finally put behind all the skeptics that, that have said, hey, this guy can't punch, this guy's just a cute boxer? Uh, believe it or not, I think I uh, silenced the critics uh, Saturday night there. I don't think there's any question about it. I was never a critic, and he silenced me. <laughs> if you didn't silence him Saturday night, Michael, there was never a chance. Silence right now. <laughs> and incidentally, I, I do have to say, too, I'm going to talk right across you, Mike, to Al, but I, but I haven't seen a young fighter handle the spotlight as well as this guy either. Absolutely true, and uh, just about everything that is happening to you is now putting you in a position where you have to handle it. And, but you really like your fighting, prepared yourself for that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I, I, I prepared myself for this because I just wanted to work hard and be successful with what I've done and keep my feet on solid ground and stay balanced. And you know, I credit that success to a, 
a lot of the people that I, I have around in my family and Tengu's boxing organization. Well, you and Tengu's together in boxing have grown. Uh, they grew from the beginnings almost with you. Yes, we have. We got started on the ground floor together. And I'll tell you what, the ground floor is where Drayton would like to put Terry Norris trying to work the body. And Buster, while he's still getting hit with some shots in this round, is back in this fight. Absolutely, and you said it, a clear turning point when Carlos Padilla called timeout. Right since that point, it's been at best an even fight. Uppercut a moment ago by Norris. Stunned Drayton again. Michael, we know we're going to have you on many, many times here talking about fighters again. A great win on Saturday night. Very deserved win. We wish you the best. Thank you very much, Barry. Michael Nutt, of course, the IBF middleweight champion. You're going to hear that name an awful lot. Miz will get used to it. Michael, second two, none. We'll be back. Top his head, man. We don't want to bang him right on. Well, Terry Norris landing this perfect left, oh, right on the point of the chin. And Buster Drayton was stunned there. The uppercut from Terry Norris will also be a big shot in here. We start the fifth round. A lot of action in that fourth round while we were chatting with Michael Nunn, but you saw the uppercut by Norris, clearly, clearly the best punch of the round, but it was a, a pretty even round over and above that uppercut by Norris. trying to work the body. He's bordering on low blows, and he's drawn a couple of warnings from Carlos Padilla. Well, wh the, the worst low blow was right after the um, strange intervention by Padilla. When, he, when, when Drayton came back, the first left hook he threw was way low. Downstairs and upstairs by Norris with the right hand. Another low blow by Drayton, but Terry Norris hurts him with the right hand. Big shot. The right hand's back straighten up, and he's hurt and in trouble. And look at the veteran, how well he covers up and slips those punches, even while he's hurt. What a very, very disciplined effort by Terry Norris. Now look at him. This is a, a very special fight for him, the way he's fighting it so far, because he's doing most everything right. And there's Drayton hitting on the break. Buster's a little frustrated that some things are happening that he would rather not have happen right now. I think Buster looks like he wants to fight the fight inside, and every time he does, Norris tags him. And see, here's where Terry Norris now, he says, I'm, now I'm going to box. I'm going to make him fight the way I want him to fight, control the tempo of this bout, rather than just going in looking for a knockout, even if I did have him hurt. Because he feels that he'll own Drayton as the rounds continue. Movement from Norris, and it's not all just a dance. No, and against some other fighter, you might say, Yeah, go in and get him, get him out right now. But Drayton is very dangerous with those wild punches, and you have to be careful. Drayton talking to Norris now, wants him to come to him. <laughs> Norris been counter punching pretty well, too. Well, he's got superb hand speed, and that is why it makes that counter punching even better. seen Terry over the last couple of years just improve steadily. Once again, Carlos Padilla talks to Buster Drayton about low blows. That time, actually, Norris was on the move, and I don't think Drayton could really direct that punch. Drayton's been sparring with Prince Charles Williams, who's defending his crown on April 7th in Cleveland. And uh, that's good sparring. You can spar with a guy like that. It does seem now the difference in the fight is Terry Norris's hand speed. Well, and that's what the devil buster against Julian Jackson. Remember, this is a 12-round fight because it is an NABF championship. Another effective round for Terry Norris. We follow you into the corner of Buster Drake. Huh? Huh? Miguel Diaz, of course, yeah, been around the track more than once. A lot of experience here, too. Let's listen. Defense too much. Watch the low blows. Yeah, he turned around on that side. Hold it. Don't argue. Don't argue. Don't argue. I want you to use your jab, Buster. Over here, ready? Over here. Another one? I want you to use your jab, Buster, and double it up. Stop looking for one punch. Okay. Because you're giving us, this kid is dead tired, and you're giving him this fight. And uh, Terry Norris showing you the hand speed. Oh, the excellent straight right. That's what hurt Buster Drayton. Drayton doing a wonderful job of covering up. Norris punching well and really not being wild. 
but it's just that Drayton is so good at, at covering up. I got it. I got it. One bit of misinformation in Buster Drayton's corner. They were saying, this kid is so tired, he's waiting to fall down. Not true, I don't believe. They want Drayton to use his jab and, in fact, double up on his jab. And again, a counter-punching left hand by Norris. Overhand right was just a little short. Look at the punch profile. And you see the edge we're talking about with Norris. And not just, not only is he landing more punches, uh, they're hard punches. And he's now, I think, stunned Buster a little bit again. Take a look at your card, Al. I have Norris winning the 50-45. That would mean every round. Well, no, you had a 10-8 round. I, yeah, and I had a 10-10 round. One I, I had even, but it was a 10-8 for uh, Norris in there. Big doings here in Las Vegas tomorrow night, something you're involved in. Yeah, I'm going to be performing over at the Shark Club in a big blues festival with uh, Lattimore, a very fine blues performer. We're going to be over there. Uh, I might even do the ESPN blues for him. Really? Oh, that's right, of course. It's a big blues festival. Don Heron is bringing to Las Vegas, and uh, that's a fun place, so we should have a lot of fun over there. Lattimore and Bernstein. Sounds like a I, law firm. I, yeah, I think so. Something like that. <laughs> Instead, they're doing the blues. I that's don't know. right. It's this world coming to. And uh, right now, Buster Drayton has a few blues because he cannot get inside against Terry Norris. And uh, that's where he needs to be, really. Norris really fighting a complete fight, doing just about every facet well. He's counterpunching well, he's jabbing well, he's moving well. And he's punching for power pretty well, too. It's been a very consistent effort by Terry Norris. Showing people that he can do both, that he can box and that he can strike. That was all of it in microcosm right there. He did what is technically an illegal move and gets warned by pushing a guy off, but when you're fighting a tough guy like Buster Drayton who knows all the tricks, that's the kind of stuff you better use when you're a 21 year old. Pushed him against the ropes, waited for him to bounce off and hit him with the right hand. Body shots, three to the body, and then a left hand upstairs. That was a beautiful combination by Terry Norris. I mean, that was superb. And again, a three-punch combination. He gets out without being counted. Impressive. Perfect, son. Perfect. That's the way to fight around. You're banging on him. He's about, his legs are about to go now. So just don't worry about unloading on him. Just combination him. He'll go. You're doing good. Sort of says everything we need to say. Al, let's take a look at a little action from that round. Well, Joe Sajadovich with uh, what is sage advice. And there is the point where he pushed him off and then nailed him with the right hand. Terry Norris bullying Buster Drayton, who... Now here's, here's the body combination. The left hook gets in there left very well, and so does the second left hook. The right hand didn't get there, but if you land two out of three punches in a combination like that, you're in business. We're in the fingers of the punch profile guys to the bone tonight. That's for sure, yeah. <laughs> of course, they didn't work on Saturday night, remember. <laughs> Bakunovi and Cloak and Hobson work in that fight. They, they had to count about 10 punches, I think, to Michael Dunn and Samba Collin. Buster Drayton's just going to have to get busier if he... Only six punches average landing around for Buster Drayton, and you're not going to win any rounds that way. Let's take a look at the punches in round six. Mm. And look at the connect ratio for Terry Norris. He did a very good job landing both to the body and the head. Norris, just a moment ago, a straight right to the head, back Drayton up again. Hey. 
We're at the showboat here in Las Vegas. This is the NABF Super Welterweight title. Buster Drayton, Black Trunks, Red Stripe, Terry Norris, and the White Norris has dictated the tempo of the fight and simply said has been most impressive. This, he figures, one step before a title shot. Well, there's no reason not to think if Terry Norris continues to box this way, and let me hasten to point out, the one thing about Buster Drayton that always makes him dangerous is he has terrific power. So you can't count him out of the fight. But the way Terry Norris is boxing him right now, you would have to anticipate that if he kept on this way, Terry Norris would be doing the things that anybody would want to see from a championship contender. Drayton wants the fight inside, but yet every time Norris has stepped in and obliged him, Norris has gotten the better of it. And in fact, the IBF, by the way, has Terry Norris rated for it, so they have him right up there. Making Drake miss just with his quickness. Body shot now. <laughs> Buster Drake, you know, against a more stationary opponent, might be looking better than he is right now. Not that he's at the absolute top of his game. Obviously, he's 35 years old. His last fight was the loss to Julian Jackson, and that was in July of 88, so it's been a while since he fought. But nevertheless, oh, big right by Norris. Set up with a left hand. When you're facing a really quick young fighter like this, it makes you look even worse. Drayton was in training to fight Pepino Cuevas. The name from the but they couldn't find Cuevas. Yeah. That was the problem. Former welterweight champion, really well past his prime. I guess they were going to build out as two ex-champions. Uh, and there is the reason why a bus Drayton got his attention with that right. Definitely did. Backs him into the corner. That's where Drayton wants it. Close to the body. And a left hand. He may have really hurt Terry Norris with that right. We'll see. Oh, good hook by Norris. Big finish by Buster Drayton. Was it enough is the only question. At least it might have gotten his confidence back in this fight, though. I don't know that he did enough to win a round, to tell you the truth. I would doubt that, but uh, it could have been enough to perhaps really hurt Terry. So let's take a look at it. Oh, whoa, that was a very nice right hand. And Norris on his bicycle, though he's been there anyway. But the difference here was Drayton was able to corner him against the ropes and at least in this beginning sequence not get hit with too many counter punches as he pressed forward. That right to the body was the only real good punch Drayton landed in the sequence following that this right. And he was lunging a little bit on that. That's the only reason I think that punch wasn't any better. He wasn't really set down on it. Come on. Let him down. That from a man who's never thrown a right hand in his life. How do you like that? <laughs> but you knew that he wasn't set down on that one, Gary. The uh, press corps figures Terry Norris would, would win this fight. 16 voted for him. My scoring so far, I've got Terry Norris winning handily at this point. 16 of the press corps voted for Norris, and five only voted for Drayton. Norris came in here at a favorite. He's minus 650 and Drake plus 450 on the betting board. What a combination, three or four punch combination by Norris. Doesn't seem to be any residual effect on Terry Norris from the right hand near the end of the round by Buster Payton. Yeah, he has shaken that off well. It was a very good punch by Buster. has been very good at giving Buster just enough movement. He hasn't been running around the ring that much. I mean, here he's moving, but it's mostly been the kind of movement just to make Buster be at an angle where he can't hit him properly. Crowd getting on Terry Norris a little bit, but he's setting something up with this. It's pretty hard to criticize Terry Norris's performance tonight. He's done everything right. Terry will walk around and move around and all of a sudden step in with two three-punch combinations, so it's not unprecedented. Come 
Creighton still trying with the right hand. He's been short the last two. <laughs> Norris's hand speed really has been the difference in this fight. And that's where Drayton wants him. side and maybe that's not such a hot idea for him though he's not paying a steep price for it right now and you know what the jab of Terry Norris has not been that effective in the last three or four rounds even though I still have him winning off most of these rounds big right hand there by Norris that definitely got Drayton's attention and we come to the end of the round Norris back into his corner and we'll be back after Terry Norris's jab not always as effective as he would like but look here there's a counter right by Buster Drayton so we saw both men doing what they want to do in this fight here's Norris at the end of the round with a nice right hand to the head of Buster Drayton but it was a round in which might have been the first one that I thought in fact it was I have to say honestly that Buster Drayton won in this fight and even that was a pretty close round very close And we talked about uh, the jab as a, as a real key for Terry Norris, but the, he's landed 101 of 197 of his non-jabs of the left hooks and the straight right. So he's winning it in a way that one might not expect him. Usually if the jab isn't working for Terry Norris, other things won't be. And he's been very impressive. Drayton wants Norris at close quarters. That's the beauty where he wants him. <laughs> And it's not that Norris is a bad fighter in this inside. We may see a point taken away. Could be. Yeah, this will be about the fourth time. I guess not. Well, Buster is a little distressed at Norris, but I'll tell you what, Buster got Christmas early. Early in this fight from Padilla, so I think uh, Norris has one coming here. Back to action. Norris is all right. Buster still committed to that body work going downstairs, not intimidated by the fact that he got the warning from Padilla. <laughs> Hand speed there by Norris. Again, three punch combination, at least two of them scored. And you know what, Terry Norris now doing much better on the inside. <laughs> He's the one ripping combination. He is definitely, and he backed right out of this. He's scoring very effectively. He's not missing very many punches at all. Well, it is the hand speed right now, obviously, that's the key difference for Terry Norris. always throwing in combination on the inside never just one punch he'll go to the body with the right then he'll come up to the head and he is just dominating Buster Drayton in this round and doing it mostly on the inside good bleeding a little bit from the mouth Counterpunching of Norris becoming increasingly more effective as the spot goes on. Big combination there. And Drayton is in trouble. I have an idea Drayton might have hurt his jaw. He's, he's been fighting with his mouth open since a shot in close quarters about halfway through this round. Amazingly, he was hurt with that right hand. Buster still coming forward. Norris now fighting like a man who feels that he has this fight won, and for all intent, it appears he does. 
We'll go into Drayton's corner with you. Go south for this round. If you don't get any better this round, we're going to stop and start fighting. Because you're taking a beating. You're not doing anything. You're not doing nothing. This guy's hitting you with clean shots. You're blowing your plate. I don't want to see you get in there and get hurt, man. You ain't even got a throw punch. You don't do something. You want to stop it? Yeah, we're going to stop it. Then stop looking for one thing. Stop looking for one goddamn punch and double that jab. It's south for this round. Take it south for this round, all right? And see if you can confuse him with south for it, okay? Let's stop for this round. Let's stop for this round. See if you can confuse him with south for it, okay? You okay? Yeah, look. Sure. Now, come on, babe. You, you are way better. Terry Norris on the inside, so effective. The left uppercut following the short right hand, and uh, the right hand would continue to be a good weapon for him. There is a good straight right. Now, that really stunned Buster Drayton, but, hey, he's in condition for this fight, Buster. There's no question. Now, they told him to come southpaw. He does it. I'm not, I don't know about that strap. Buster does fight southpaw often, and there he is southpaw, but he hasn't done it yet in this fight. And they want to see if that will confuse Terry Norris. See what Terry does in response to that. And he does exactly the right thing. Starts circling to his left so he can get outside the right foot of Buster Drayton with his left foot. And there it pays dividends. He, he lands a right to the body. See, double left hook. There's a well-schooled fighter. Boy, you, you've got to admire that. Norris, I've got him ahead 89-82. It's like a basketball or a football game. Don't you love it when a team clamps a press on you and you see the team call a timeout, come out, and then work through that press? That's what Terry Norris just did. Absolutely right. It's like recognizing the defense to yes. make your basketball analogy. This is in the ninth round only. Wow, and you see what a superb round for Terry Norris. That might have been one of his best rounds as a pro, period. Well, you and I have seen him together on a couple of occasions, and you've seen him on numerous occasions. And this is, just speaking for myself, it's as good as I've seen Terry Norris. He has risen to the level of his competition yes. tonight. And now he does one other thing to nullify the left of style. He lures him inside where he can do this. Once you're on the inside, it doesn't matter left or righty. You can handle it. Lured him in there so he could do what he did so well in that last round. Norris just not wasting any punches, scoring with a high percentage of punches, as you saw a moment ago on our punch profile. This is not just a victory of a younger man with more skills over an older man who, who is not at the top of his game. This is a victory of a young man who is outboxing an older man who has lots of tricks and is not shot, just isn't what he used to be. Though I think, based upon this performance, Buster may see that he is not the fighter he was for sure. He might give some thought to retirement after the loss to Jackson. Yeah, there'll be two losses in a row. And, and as you mentioned earlier, he's a guy, and you do have the feeling, he said, I want to get out of here with something. Yeah. This is all presuming he doesn't land a big right hand and uh, make us all liars. But it doesn't look like that's happening right now. Norris just simply getting off quicker. You know, there's nothing wrong from Norris's standpoint with the fact that he hasn't knocked Drayton out. He's had him hurt two or three occasions. Buster Drayton, not the easiest man on earth to get out of there. Julian Jackson did it to his credit. But uh, this is, if it stays up, going the way it is right now, this is the kind of victory that Norris will be happy with. Well, he should be. It's been virtually a flawless performance so far. We're at the end of 10 rounds. <laughs> Well, when Buster Trayton turned the southpaw, here's what you're supposed to do against the southpaw. Double up with that left hand. That's exactly what Terry Norris did, and from the right stance as well. So we start the 11th round. Two rounds of boxing remaining. In Buster Drayton's corner about five rounds ago, they were saying Terry Norris is tired. He wasn't then, and he isn't now. No, that was a mistake. <laughs> For Buster, of course, at this point, it, it boils down to him landing something very big and taking Norris out of there. But then I was the guy that thought the Watts Thornton fight was very close last week. Well, that's so right. I'm going to absolutely go to the bank on what I'm suggesting to you. This one would really shock me. Yeah, but then based upon what I've heard this week after that fight, so did the rest of America. Yes. Take a look at the punch profile. This, uh, here again, this is pretty much indisputable. That is a big, big advantage. One of the biggest since we've started using the, uh, the punch profile. <laughs> Let's 
Drayton was low with that punch again. Cut it on the five. <laughs> That's pretty low. That's isn't low, it? yes. Now that I think about it. Drayton now in one of those situations of trying to load up. Well, you reported that Darren Van Horn now because of a hand injury apparently won't defend right away anyway against Gene Franco Rossi. He's the IBF junior middleweight champ. Uh, they have uh, a fourth ranking for Terry Norris. This is the super welterweight, which is what the WBC calls the junior middleweight division uh, for the NABF crown that Norris holds. So he could be looking at Julian Jackson, perhaps, and he'd certainly like to fight him. Three punches to the head. Wonderful combination by North. <laughs> Norris continues to be committed to the body work, which is very effective for him as well. And has helped him have such a high connect ratio for those punches. The thing about Norris is doing what every fighter, of course, dreams about doing, and that is hitting and not being hit. <laughs> So Buster Drayton, and they talked about stopping the fight in his corner a couple of rounds ago. Undoubtedly, they will let this go on to the 12th and final round, but it's a moot point at this juncture. Unless he comes up with something really big. Well, a whole career wrapped up in this minute, really, when you get right down to it. Terry Norris with the big lead on my scorecard. And uh, bringing in great big old punches, so if you stay inside his there. chest, he can't hit you with one of them, right? All right. And yeah, Josie Adovic suggesting very Terry Norris to fight this round in close, and he's been very uh, effective in close. Again, very good advice in there, because... You're safe on the inside, and he's shown he can he can handle Drayton on the inside. That's that's superb advice. It really is. So Drayton's going to have to find him before he can hit him. Seventy percent of the punches for Norris in the last round landing. Thirty-three of forty-seven. Drayton landed four of thirty-four. That's remarkable. The number's going down for Drayton and up for Norris. Now, Terry, that's where they want Terry Norris. And, I mean, they want him even closer, not even right on the chest of Drayton. Drayton did get a right hand in the moment, though. Terry held a little bit. See, Terry really didn't follow those instructions given to him. And he, if, he, if he did, he wouldn't have got hit with anything so far in this round, I don't think, or anything big. By the same token, if he dances that much in his last round, he won't get hit either, but he won't win the round, and they're presuming he doesn't need it. That's a fair assumption. I would think so, yes. Well, it hasn't been as exciting as we thought, primarily because Terry Norris has simply been better than, than, than we even thought he would be in this fight. I think that's exactly right. This is not a case where either one of them really disappointed. It's just that Morris, uh, Norris rather, has just been so much more impressive. And hand speed, again, really the difference. Buster has tried. He's thrown lots of punches. But it just hasn't been there for him. Champion Asia Koa France, who's got a date penciled in with John the Beast Mugabe. And I have a feeling that uh, the winner of that match would be quite enticing to Terry Norris. But then again, he'd like any of the champions. The great and seeing off in the body. This is dangerous for Norris, the way he's fighting this last round. 
And still, Norris getting the better of him. Yeah, he is. But, you know, you just, from his standpoint, you can't negate the fact that Buster Drake can still throw big right hands. Well, this is the best performance Terry Norris has shown us against his best opponent. And it really shows that he is world class as a junior middleweight or super welterweight, if you will. Without question. Very impressive. Ten seconds left in this one. Side of it, just stable. They had a junior middleweight champion, Luke Yakino, and uh, he might be close to having another one. Fight is over. Big win, I'm certain. I feel pretty assured of saying that by Terry Norris. Crowd boos, and honestly, I don't know why. I, I can't imagine why they would boo his performance. He, uh, it's true he didn't knock Buster Drayton out, and it's true that it wasn't a wild brawl, but Terry Norris didn't want a wild brawl. He wanted a controlled, good, strong effort. And I got to tell you, he might have knocked Buster Drayton out, but for the strange action of Carlos Padilla. I'm not saying he would have for sure. Buster Drayton was hurt, and he got about 30 extra seconds, maybe 40, to compose himself and get back in the fight. But you have to put this one down to the category of at worst A minus for oh, Terry Norris. For Buster, as we look at him, he's got to be thinking to himself, when I look at this tape, I may see some things that tell me that I, I'm not at a point where I can be a top contender. And I don't think Buster wants to just be an opponent. No, sure not. Absolutely right. We started this whole thing by saying these are two good guys. So you know a good guy's going to win, and I have an idea which good guy that might be. Let's find out for sure from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring for this NABF title belt. Dr. James Jen Kim scores the belt 117 to 111. Bill Graham, 119 to 108, and Cindy Martin scores it 120 to 107 for the winner and still champion, terrible Terry Norris. Does not fall into the category of surprise. Terry Norris, lopsided winner. That's the way it was on Al's card and all three of the judges as well. Norris is still the champion.